What up, though? It's your boy Foreman. We back with another. Well, we're not here with another. Well, this is a Madden Online rank match. But y'all see, whenever your boy got the mic up here, you know what I'm saying? My Blue Yeti mic. It's story time, y'all. I told you guys I bring y'all story time at least once a month, probably once a month. So we have hit that once a month. And before we get into this story time, I want to let all you guys know that the PS4 attorney will be popping off uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern time today. I dropped the brackets for it last night to give you guys a head start if you want to get your first round games out the way or if you want to contact your opponent to set up a time. But we will be kicking off at 5 p.m. No exceptions. If you are not there, then you will forfeit your buy-in and forfeit your game. So get your game set up. Xbox, I know you guys want to do attorney too. So Xbox, if you would like to do a tourney also, $10 buy-in tourney. Comment down below. We can get you guys set up and we can run you guys tournament probably like Sunday. Saturday or Sunday. So, Xbox, if you guys looking to get down, let your boy know. For those who could not get into the PS4 tourney, if I get another 30, I'll throw together another tourney for y'all. It's that simple. Just let your boy know. Now that we got all that out the way, first I'm going to hit y'all with the old school. Uh-huh, what y'all know about that? This is the old school uh, intro and one of my very first subs made for your boy. But, yeah. So look, this is a story of my first time going to jail and the police took your boy with no draws on. I was out here free balling in these streets, something crazy. Now, nah, so look, <laughs> I'm going to tell you how it happened, but first I got to give you a little backstory. So my pop, I went, I actually, I went to jail for something I didn't do. So my pops, rest in peace, and my brother, also rest in peace, we all have the same name. So, you know what I'm saying? On some, my pops would live a different type of life. So his idea was always give me, my brother, and him the same name. So whichever one of us got in trouble, we can use the name of whoever was free at the time. So if them two was locked, if, if, if say if two of us was locked up and then one of us got in trouble, we would just use the person's name who didn't have the warrants at the time or who who record was the cleanest at the moment. So that was his idea about us. So he did that. He gave all of us the same name. And I actually ended up getting booked for uh, a gun possession that belonged to my brother at the time who was deceased. He had been killed like a month prior. So I, uh, this day I didn't go to work. So I'm chilling at the crib. Ooh, that was a nice yick him up. So I'm chilling at the crib. And I'm waiting for, uh, like, this had to be, I was like 19 at the time. I'm waiting for my ex to come over to the crib. Now, at the time, I got on nothing but, like, a little beater, some raggedy jogging pants, and your boy free balling up underneath. Free balling hood turned me, no drawers on. Because you already know what's about to go down. So when um she finally gets to the crib... And she not she called me, hey, I'm outside. So I go to open the door. Now, as I go and open up the door, when she's coming up the porch, a black uh a black truck, tinted windows, whoop up on your boy on the crib real quick. Boop, boop. And these dudes get up out the car. So when they get out the car, I already know something going down. So they get up out the car, they walk up on, and they ask, they looking for uh they actually looking for my brother. But they use my name. So I'm like, yeah, that's me. So famo, it's like three or four of them. They all got on like, you know what I'm saying? They little bulletproof vest. They get it up and they big as hell. So one of them automatically gripped me up and he says, OK, uh, we got it. We're going to have to take you in. I'm like, take me in for what? So my girlfriend at the time yells to the back to the back because my Dukes is in the back. So my mom come running up all frantically. What's going on? What's going on? So they say uh, he got a warrant for his arrest. He skipped bond on a, a felony firearm charge. So my mom was like, well, my son don't have no felony firearm. You know how black mamas go. She get to go on something crazy. So they go to the car. They get the paperwork. They come up and they pull out the paperwork. But it's not a picture of me. It's a picture of my brother who's no longer with us. 
So my dukes tell her, that's not my son. That's his brother. They have the same name. So the officer looking at her like, what? So he pulls out the uh, picture of my brother, his mug shot, and it's a picture of him. Now, you would think that would be enough for them to be like, okay, cool. No, these niggas arrested me anyway. So they book me up and they get, <laughs> this is the crazy part, and they get ready to run me in. So he slapped me up against the wall. He said, well, we still have to take him in. But once we get down to uh, the county, once they run his prints and everything, they'll probably release him. Based off this story, you already can guess they did not do that. So they booked me up. Now, while they booking me, I'm in my head thinking like, damn, I should tell these niggas, yo, can I go put some draws on? Because I don't have none on. But I'm like, ah, my Duke's right here. I don't want to say it in front of my mama. So my mom in full panic, like full black parent panic mode. So I'm like, I wait till she go away. And then when she run in the house to call somebody, I don't know who she was going to call because at the time my pops was in prison and like that, it was just, it was nobody else to call. She probably called my grandma or my auntie or somebody like that. So when she, uh, did he walked away, I'm like, Hey, look, man, before y'all take me in, can I just run in the crib real quick? And so the officer was like, what? I'm like, look, I need to put some drawers on, fam. I don't have on any. Nigga looked me clear in my eyes and was like, okay, no. So he booked me in a car. And I'm like, come on, fam. Like, I got like these real loose jogging pants on. They don't have no drawstring on them. So we get into the car and then we start, they take me to a... Uh, I'm in Detroit, so right off Grand River, it's the uh, 96 uh, Interstate. So they take me there to meet up with a, a, I guess it was like a jail van that had other people they had caught. You know what I'm saying? Other people that had skipped out on bond, etc. So we waiting there. The nigga, the niggas actually was pretty cool. They, they, the one nigga wasn't cool who ain't let me get no drawers on, but the rest of them actually was pretty cool. So we sitting in there. I'm waiting on the jail van. Jail van pull up. They put me in there. I'm cuffed up. So like my jogging pants keep dropping. Ass crack all up out the jogging pants, famo. So they, uh, you know, they're not going to help me. So they throw me in the jail van with other people. Crack out. You know what I'm saying? I got on a white bit. I look like a whole crackhead. You know what I'm saying? Like I was just ready to just chill at the crib I didn't know all this was about to go down, but he could have let me, you know what I'm saying, throw some drawers on. So we get down to booking, and they book me in. Now, I'm thinking once they run my fingerprint and it don't match, then I'm like, oh, wrong guy. Let's get him out of here. Uh-uh. They run my fingerprint. The cop looked me dead in my eyes and said, oh, whoa, whoa, that's not you. I said, no, it's my brother who's deceased. He used my name when he caught the charge. That's not me. He said, oh, yeah, that's crazy. Well, when the judge, when you see the judge, y'all can figure that out and finish his processing me in. So they throw, they, uh, <laughs> so right before they <laughs> process you in, they check you. So for, for all y'all don't know, when they check you, they have you like uh, bend over, squat, spread your cheeks and do all that. So my man, my man's doing the check. So it's all of us, a whole bunch of dudes in one room. They do it all at one time, which is the craziest thing ever. So we right there, we all getting checked. And then while I'm, uh, <laughs> he's telling us, okay, squat, drop your pants. And so when I drop my pants, famo look at me. He's like, hey man, I'm. <laughs> he said the guy was like, hey man. Why the fuck you ain't got no drawers on? <laughs> so when a, when a nigga said that, all the other all the other prisoners and shit looked at me, and then they looked down at my pants and all that. Had <laughs> with jogger pants on the ground. So I tried to explain it to the nigga like, no, nah, what had happened was when they picked <laughs> my eyes water. I'm like, when they picked me up. My man's one, he's like, yeah, I don't really want to hear all that, cuz. Just finish, let's just finish this up. 
So they make you squat, cough, and do all that before they give you your jail clothes. Now, jail clothes don't fit. Like, they're not made to fit. They give you jail clothes, and they give you, like, the little flip-flop. I don't have on socks either. So I, I literally just got a beater, which they make you take off. And so when everybody is getting changed into their jail clothes, like, they putting on, they got their, I'm butt-ass naked. In the room where you change out at, like not kind, I'm butt naked putting on my jail clothes. So I throw on my orange little jumpsuit, and everybody looking at me weird, like, man, this nigga hold, like, who comes to jail naked? So they book me in, and then they uh they test you because before you go, you gotta get tested for tuberculosis, and I forgot it was something else. But because so after they test you for uh, tuberculosis, they throw you up in quarantine. And then while you up in quarantine, that's you. That's where you like wait for your tuberculosis results to come back. And then from there, you can go up top to your bunk where you can start getting, you know, whatever you're going to get commissary, phone calls, blah, blah, blah. But because the county is so packed, they don't really have space. So niggas is really doing whatever, however long they got in the county, they doing it in quarantine. And quarantine is one big box with about eight bunks and two boats. Boats is like where they, it's like a bed on the ground. So, but we like 15, 16 deep in that junk. So niggas is sleeping on the tables. It's stinking there. It's hell unsanitary. And here I come with no socks and no drawers. Right up in the spot. So luckily when they put me in there. Somebody had just rolled out. You know, if they had bonded out. So. I get me a bunk. Let's get it. Top bunk. Now I'm trying to like stay to myself. Because I don't want to like. Because you know. When, like, when you in there. Nobody did nothing but like spades. Uh, niggas was smoking weed. Doing all that. Because it was, it was literally nothing else for them dudes to do. So they was doing what they was doing. But it was nothing for me to do because I didn't want to get off my bunk because when you get off, you got to jump. And if I jump, my pants going to come down. Everybody going to see that I'm ass naked underneath the clothes. So I'm staying on my bunk. The food, absolutely disgusting. So I'm not eating. I'm not showering because, you know what I'm saying, the shower is where, you know what I'm saying, cats would get their smoke on. You know what I'm saying? Throw the curtain up. You go behind there. COs or nobody never came to check on you unless it was time to eat. So in between time, cats would do what they do. So I wasn't going in there. I literally spent, I think I was in there for like a whole week. I spent most of that week on my bunk, you know, doing what niggas doing. Jerry. Everybody talking about their case. I'm not talking about my case because I already, I was thinking I was going to get out at any moment. I didn't. Like, they held me there the whole entire time until my court date. And then my court date was the rawest thing I had ever been a part of. I walked in the courtroom. The judge was like, hey, um, ask, we didn't say hey, but he asked for my name and stuff. And then, um, you know, talking to my lawyer. And then my lawyer explained to him, hey, you got the wrong guy. Him and his brother have a similar name. His brother is now deceased. They show him the paperwork. The, the judge said, oh, wow, that is crazy. Well, mistakes happen and hit the gavel. Let me out. That's all he did. No apologies. No nothing. He said, the nigga said, oh, wow, mistakes happen. And then that's how I got out. But prior to me getting out, we was all sitting there. We was playing spades. And uh, one of the dudes I was locked up with knew my brother before he got killed. They was uh, all in the same area, this area, you know what I'm saying, Linwood. So he was like, yo, Zo, man, come play some spades. I'm like, nah, I'm good, man. He's like, nah, you don't want to play? I'm like, nah, I don't want to play. He's like, bro, we need one. So finally they convinced me to play. So I hop up off my bunk and I stepped on the back of, was it the front? It was either the front or the back of my pants and my whole ass crack popped out. So then it was like, hey man, what, what, what the fuck, where your drawers at? I'm like, let me explain. When I was getting booked in, you know what I'm saying? When they had first arrested me at my crib, 
I ain't had no drawers on. And then when I tried to put on drawers, the, you know what I'm saying? The officer who arrested me wouldn't let me put none on. So they hit, they hit your boy with a couple of jizz oaks and everything. And then we played a couple games of spades. But then I ended up getting back on my bunk. So I ended up, let me see, I ended up rolling out. Oh, probably the end of that week. Because I want to say it was, I went on like a Wednesday. And it was Memorial Day. It was Memorial Day weekend coming up. So I got in Wednesday. I thought I would get out that same day, like within an hour. I didn't. They kept your boy in there that whole time. And then because it was Memorial Day, I could, of course I wasn't going to see nobody that weekend. And then I didn't see anybody on, what was that, Monday and I don't know why I didn't go see anybody on Tuesday. I want to say it was that following Wednesday that they finally showed your boy some love. And I went to go see the judge. And so they booked me out. And bro, when I came to see the judge, I was looking rough. I'm talking full beard out. You know what I'm saying? Hair scruffy. Because I don't, probably didn't have a My hair grow pretty quick. So in that week, it grew crazy i'm holding my pants out but i got all type of hips showing on the left side because it's sinking in because i'm cuffed i got no undershirt under my clothes i'm musty as hell because i ain't took a shower since i got there nobody could take a shower because they were doing what they do like i was full crackhead mode the whole time i was in that joint so the moment I walked up out that boy, we didn't walk out. Because like when you bond out, after you go to court, they send you down to get processed out. Processing out takes forever. I'm talking, we was in that boy processing out for about six hours. Everybody else is processing out. Like they let you change and get up out your clothes. But my regular clothes was no better than my jail clothes. You know what I'm saying? I'm still like no drawers. No socks, but they allow me. Now I just got my beater in the jogging pants on. I wanted my jail clothes back. So we almost didn't bond out because this one cat was talking crazy with one of the COs and the nigga threatened to put us all back in. So me and family, we was about to throw the hands because there's no way I'm spending another two days in quarantine with no drawers on. I low key don't even think I got my tuberculosis results back from all that. Like we just, I just spent the whole time on lockdown, and I had zero clue what was popping. But yeah, man, that's the story, fam. That story how your boy went to the bing, ooh, dot with no time left. I'm cold out here. But yeah, that's the story how your boy went to the bing with the bucky nakedness with no draws on. I hope you guys enjoyed this little story and this, this gameplay behind it was low key fire. I whooped him up and he quit at the last second. But I hope you guys enjoyed this gameplay, man. If you guys want another story time, holla at your boy and I get at y'all later, man. Peace.